somewhere in the world, but you are here with me. And I definitely appreciate that to all the new people stopping by my channel. Hi, you guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on that bell notification so you're notified each time I post a video. And to all of my returning subscribers, hey, y'all. So, you may see me in the same outfit. I am batch recording. Um, on this vlog, I am going to be doing a stove top cover. I've seen this on Pinterest and basically if you buy it on Etsy, it's $150. And I feel like I'm crafty enough to get this done, so I'm gonna do it myself. So if you wanna see how I accomplish this stove top cover, then definitely keep on watching. Okay, y'all, so I'm working on multiple projects today. However, like I said, I am doing the stove top cover. And so I have my wood, like so, like so, already pre-cut. Um, I'll put the dimensions in the comments, I mean, in the description below. And then I also have some sand, like a sandpaper block. This is 220 grits. You can use 100, it's totally up to you, but I am using this one. I got this from Lowe's, it was like $4 and some change. And like I said, they pre-cut the wood for me there. This is pine, I believe this is, I use two one by six pieces, two one by six by six pieces, and then one one by four by four, and the wood that I used is pine. And so I'm gonna go ahead and sand this real quick before I go ahead and add my, um, my stain. And of course, I'm gonna show you guys how it's gonna be. So definitely keep on watching. And so like I mentioned, I am using a 220 grit sandpaper block. I got this from Lowe's. I believe it was like 274. Um, but I'm going ahead and sanding the edges as well as the front and back. When I got this, um, this these boards cut from Lowe's, it was just a rough cut. And so the edges aren't as nice and even as I would like. And so yeah, so I'm just going in and sanding it and I'm doing that for all of the pieces so it's a total of six pieces so six pieces will be sanded and wiped off okay y'all so y'all is hot in this georgia heat um and so i have my pieces sanded so i have four of these right here um and they are at 30 inches which is the one by six by six pieces cut into 30 inches and then i have the one by four by four cut in 22 inches so this will be the width or the length of my stove and then this right here will be the width so i'm going to um go ahead and test out this finish to see exactly how dark I want it to be um, and just do it on some test scrap pieces so I'm not wasting any of my wood on this project. Okay y'all, so this is the wood finish that I'm using. I got this from my dad, but you can, oh, I got this from my dad, but you can definitely get this from your local Lowe's or whatever, I think it's like $7 and some change. But I got it from my dad for free. He also gave me some mineral spirits so that way if I need to cut this, I can to make it lighter. It's totally up to me. And then we got these paint brushes. Leah's my assistant. We got these paint brushes from Lowe's. It was a three pack for $5 and some change. So like I said, we're just gonna do a test with these to see how the stain is actually going to come out. So like I said, we're just gonna give these pieces a little test. So I am showing Leah how to actually properly use this stain. So as you can see here, we're just um, painting the, the little scrap pieces of wood. And so we can get a true representation of what it will look like. go with this color right here so 
like I said, we liked that color. So I'm just going in with the stain and I'm staining the top of the pieces. Make sure that you use like a very thin layer. You don't want it to be too thick. Um, so I am just wiping that on with the paintbrush. And then also make sure once this dries that you get your sides, your end pieces, as well as the back. Okay, you guys, so this is what we are looking like for my wood pieces. Ignore these right here in the center. This is for another project. But these right here, these three, and these three, these are for the stone, um, the stove covers. And so I am going to go ahead and flip these over and I will paint the other side. Um, but I know that these are gonna be the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint these because it looks like it's about to pour down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip these over, paint them real quick two times, let them dry, and hopefully they hold up before it rains. And then I can add the, um, the uh, clear coat on it so that way it will seal it. <music> dry and I had to say I got water in my glasses um I had to bring the pieces into the garage so that way they would dry um just a little bit more before I put the what I was gonna show you guys is my dad gave me this polyurethane um and this is just for me to spray on top it's a clear gloss um and so that way it doesn't you know scratch or anything like that um, and it'll also be good when I go to put my vinyl on. Um, so I'll just be designing that with my Cricut, um, my Cricut Explore Air 2. But once this completely dries, then I'll just give this a quick little coat or whatever. And it says that it's maximal durability and fast dry time. I don't want to spray this in the garage. I kind of want to um, spray this on the outside so that way I don't stink up the garage because the stain it's already smelling up the garage so yeah so i'm just gonna give give it probably about another 30 minutes um and then i'll go ahead and spray this coat on hopefully this rain passes by fairly quickly um hey leah um and leah has also helped me paint a lot so i'm gonna pan down so that way y'all can see what the finished product is looking like so, hey, so this is what we're looking like so like I said, I have these pieces are painted with the finish, I mean with the same front and back. And so I have two pieces right here and then this piece right here. And then also the two big pieces on the end and that little piece right there. So those have been stained. Um, and like I said, I'm just waiting for these to dry and then we will call it a day. So the pieces are officially dry and it has stopped raining. I went ahead and flipped them over back to the original side and I am going to go ahead and go in and spray with this polyurethane. And um, I'm just gonna spray one time on the front and yeah, hopefully this will dry by the time I go to pick up Carmen. And then I can come back and spray the back and let that dry for a little bit. And then I can start drilling the pieces. Okay, you guys, so one of the key elements that is for this project is the handles, and I decided to get the Allen & Roth. I love this brand. They were $3.98 at my Lowe's, um, and it also comes with four screws, too short and too long. My, my kitchen is gonna be black and white, so I felt like these were gonna be perfect. And so right now, I'm just going ahead and using my tape measure and measuring where exactly my screws need to go. Just a little bit of advice, make sure that you measure where the screws are actually gonna go and not for the actual end piece of the handle. I made that mistake and accidentally drilled the hole in the wrong spot, but luckily I didn't go too far and it just makes the piece look a little bit more distressed. But yeah, just word of the wise, just make sure that you um, measure for where the screw is supposed to go. Thank you. 
this is pine wood. My dad mentioned that I needed to pre-drill the holes so that way I didn't worry about the wood splitting. And that's exactly what I did. Um, at the hardware store, they did not have any one inch screws. These were actually um, one inch and five eighths. You really only need a one inch screw and that five eighths definitely made a difference. So just check at your local hardware store and make sure that you have just one inch screws to use that for this project. Trust me, it will save you so much time and energy. Somewhat of a finished product. I got my handles on, they ain't going nowhere. So this is what we're looking like. So after I had to disassemble to reassemble, we are in there like swimwear. I'm really glad with how this turned out. Now all I need to do is just get my vinyl so I could put on here. I love how the wood has these marks. Looks really, really good, you guys. Really, really good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and dust off these um, sand pieces. And we are ready to go. And so like I mentioned, I used my Cricut Explore Air 2 to go ahead and create my vinyl. So I went ahead and cut out all of my pieces. So I already had a template for the scallop pieces. So I printed three of those. And then I also printed one large W in Times New Roman in 12 inch font. And so I'm just going here and weeding out all of the excess of vinyl to start prepping my, um, start prepping my stove cover. I'm also gonna be using using some Cricut uh, transfer tape so that way I can transfer this over to the actual stove cover. And the vinyl that I'm using is the white vinyl that is the permanent um, Cricut vinyl. I feel like this one is definitely going to do good on this board and I had it on hand so I didn't have to spend any extra money. But you can also use Oracle 651 or 691 if you have it on hand. And so after I get my vinyl transferred over to the transfer tape, just making sure that I'm not tearing it or anything like that, I am just gonna place it on my board and then I'm gonna start measuring from side to side to make sure that this is perfectly centered because there's nothing worse than having you know your board done and guess what? It's off centered with the vinyl. And so I'm just giving that a quick measure before I go ahead and smooth it onto the board.
Well, y'all, I am all finished with my stove cover and I am so excited of how this turned out. Like this turned out better than expected. Like it's definitely going to be a wonderful addition in our kitchen. I love how the handles are perfectly paired. And I even love the color of how this thing came out, y'all. This picture and this video does not do it justice. Like it looks amazing but yeah y'all that is going to be it for this vlog if you like this video make sure you give it a big thumbs up if you're working on any um diy projects let me know down in the comments below if you want to attempt this let me know as well y'all like this I, like I said, I'm just so excited. But don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you never miss an upload, you guys. And until next time, you guys, I will see you on the next one. Talk to you soon. Bye.